our headline story. Reviewing Nigeria's port operations. Now the port of any country is a viable source of revenue and forms part of the new blue economy. Nigeria, like many of her neighbors in West Africa, has access to the Atlantic Ocean and has engaged in trade on the waterways for centuries. But there have been issues with Nigeria maximizing the potential of her ports, not just for international commerce, but also for the local economy. Our focus today is the port operations of Africa's largest economy. I'm Tolu Lokwe at Dileri Balogun. Welcome. This is Business Edge. Mention Nigeria ports and you'll probably hear something like this. <sighs> a very, very big sigh. You'll also probably hear a lot about what the issues are and why things are the way they are, particularly at the Lagos ports of Tinkan and Apapa. From the problems of congestion and traffic gridlock to the workaround and the turnaround for clearing goods, there is a laundry list of things that need to be addressed and dealt with when it comes to Nigeria's ports. The acting manager, managing director of the Nigerian Port Authority, Mohamed Belo Koko, has assured port users that the NPA is committed to speedily resolving all challenges against the smooth implementation of the electronic call-up system. The e-call-up system was introduced about three months ago to fix the problem of trucks lined up on the highways and roads of Lagos. Now, despite the efforts of various stakeholders in the maritime industry to free the port access roads, from the perennial gridlock, the situation has defied all solutions as criminal elements, allegedly aided by some government officials and security agents, have hijacked control of the traffic in the Apapa access. Now joining me, I have someone who's going to be speaking to us on this situation, a very um, difficult situation that he's very intimate with, and that is, of course, Jama Omubuariri. He's the chief promoter and co-founder of, Tra of Truck Transport Parks Limited. Jama, good morning and welcome to Business Edge. Good morning, Tolu. All right, nice thank you so much. Great. Thank you thank so much you. for having, uh, for joining us. So before we get into the electronic call-up system, which seems to sort of be the Cinderella story, everyone felt this was going to solve the issues that were at play in Apapa and Tin Can. Tell us what the situation was before this system came into play. How did trucks know when to come for their goods? Um, what was the situation at hand? Okay. Um, before 27th of February 2021, we had a very chaotic situation in Apapa. The situation involved the manual and often discretionary invitation of trucks into the ports. And what this involved was that business owners who had trucks or who had cargo that they needed to either bring to the port or evacuate from it will typically find a way of squeezing their truck through the very, very tough traffic. And this involved quite a number of um, activities that have been well documented in, in the news. For instance, you may need to pay a police officer or a military person or someone else in authority to act as an escort for your truck in order for it to jump the queue, as we say in Nigeria, and get to the front. And there was also a manual call-up system. This manual call-up system involves that the um, uh, Nigerian Post Authority and its sister agencies, including the terminal operators within the port, will prepare a manifest of trucks that they are expecting to come to the port. And that manifest is provided to either the presidential tax force or to the police. And with this, they will then be inviting the trucks on the on that manifest to the port from the various parks and sometimes from the access roads where they are waiting. So it's, um, it was a very disorganized system, really. Mm -hmm. it, it did not allow for equity because if you can pay your way to be able to get to the uh, head of the queue, then you're able to get priority. Some others also pay to have their way in the night so that when the rest of the uh, vehicular traffic are on, on pause, they can then come into the port and they can leave very early in the morning. So there were a lot of complaints, and um, this had been going on for quite a while. So that was the situation before the call-up system was introduced. All right, so there was just a manual call-up system and then some people using um, some kind of payment system to get police escorts or security escorts to get them to the front of the queue. So there was no other way, no other attempt that whether it's the federal government of Nigeria or the MPA tried in order to handle the situation. It was just those methods that were available. Well, a number of interventions have been done by both the Nigerian Port Authority and the federal government. Um, particularly, a presidential tax force was um, 
inaugurated in about 2018. And um, the work of the tax force was to clear a paper of the gridlock and then operate uh, a manual call-up system pending the introduction of an electronic call-up system. Mm. So that system came, it had its advantages, um, it introduced some sort of um, order by uh, from time to time evacuating all the trucks that were on the road and um, using the manual call-up as I described earlier to try to manage the movements of truck traffic into and out of the ports. But there were a lot of challenges with this, yeah. as you will expect, with a manual system uh, in a part of the economy that was very, very um, cash dependent. All right, so this brings us up to speed now, as you said, in February when the electronic call-up system um, actually launched and took off. So t tell us about the system. How does it work uh, for the trucks, for the companies involved in port operations um, in Lagos, in Apapa, in Tenkan? All right, so to assume that you are a truck owner and you want this truck or you need this truck to come to the port environment to do some uh, cargo lifting or evacuation business, it's a profile to platform so it allows you to register a profile just as you can get an email address from Google. register you are expected to uh, provide your email address your phone number uh, your address and you are also expected to register the trucks that you have on your fleet now after registering your trucks you also need to register the drivers who you have in your employ who you would need from time to time to move any of these trucks their details, including their driver's license number and their phone number, will be uploaded. When this is done, your profile is complete. Now, someone invites you to, hey, help me pick up this cargo or help me take this container to the You go into your profile, you select a truck that matches the business that you just received. You select a driver from those you've registered under your profile. You then uh, plot the itinerary of this truck. This is come, come from Ibadan, for example. So you are going to use a pack at Asheshe. We are going to use a pack at Ojota to wait until you are invited to the pregate. A pregate is a pack that is the most proximate to the port. So you move from your garage, operational location, your warehouse, to a uh, pack called a holding bay. And from there, you are then electronically invited to a pregate. So what this invitation does is that it helps to manage the amount of trucks that are under any point in time. Yeah. And using the pregate system enables you to be able to come closer to the port corridor at the time that the terminal you're going to, uh, the port you're going to, is ready to receive you within the next um, 24 to 48 hours. From the pregate, depending on how free the, the port or terminal you're going to is of existing traffic, you are then electronically invited. So this electronic invitation is that you as the administrator or the owner of that profile gets an email notification and a text notification that your truck is now due to leave the pregate, which uh, is Lilipon Truck Transit Park or the, the uh, Truck Transit Park at Tinkan. And you are supposed to uh, move the truck from there, tag out electronically with a ticket and access code we've given you electronically, mm. and your driver can then get to the port. So the driver also received this uh, notification, the driver okay. you selected for that particular trip. So with that, the driver is expected to leave the pregate and then head to the port. Now, a critical element of the success of this arrangement is that the roads have to be free. Mm -hmm. So um, it is expected that at the beginning, which is uh, February 27th, the roads have to be clear. And this happened. The government made sure that the roads were clear. But the roads needed to continue to be clear. clear. In other words, people who have not gone through this system are not supposed to be allowed onto the road. And that is um, the role of um, state mm -hmm. The second element is that the road themselves should be in good condition. Apapa is currently in a state of flux in terms of road infrastructure. So a lot of ongoing road construction and rehabilitation is going on. And this uh, also impacted the free flow as some arteries are closed and others now have to funnel more traffic than they are meant to handle. Mm. But if these issues were not there, the trucks are meant to move seamlessly from the pre-gate to the port, which should take anything between 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. So on getting to the port, you will then be validated. There's a gate barrier at the gate that you need to use the same access code you use to access the pre-gate and the park mm -hmm. to also check yourself in. So that way, you can trace and track the movement of the truck from when it leaves the owner's warehouse or, um, or location till it enters the port or the terminal where it is going to. So that's okay. how it was designed to work.
So that's really one of the most detailed um, descriptions I've seen of all of this system because we just hear e call up, e call up, but a lot of us don't know how those things along the points work. So going through that system, is there payments involved? So you talked about the fact that the company, the owner of the truck, as well as the driver, will get this electronic uh, notification that it's time to move wherever you are, depending on different points along the system. So is this something that owners of these trucks are meant to pay to be part of? Is that one of the reasons maybe not everyone is part of it? Because you did mention the fact that as the roads are supposed to be cleared, it's also supposed to be cleared of those who are not part of the e uh, call up system. So is it a choice for truckers, for those hauling uh, goods coming out of Tin Can um, or coming out of a Papa to not be part of the electronic call up system? Okay, so um, it's meant to be an all inclusive arrangement. And um, this means that every truck that is on the road is supposed mm -hmm. to be on the platform. However, the, the system is graduated such that those who are uh, um, heading to the ports are the first to be brought into this regulation net because they actually constitute the uh, largest single chunk of truck traffic in the ecosystem. So those are the ones really part of the system. You also have tankers that belong to the various um, oil and gas distribution companies. Yeah. They are currently not part of the ETO system because their demographic is slightly different. But for those heading the ports, they are meant to be platform from or even before February 27th. So the clearing of the road of uh, static trucks was to ensure that those heading to the ports who have the electricity are not to enter the road arteries leading to the ports, therefore causing congestion to those who have genuine tickets. So that was how it was meant to work. In terms of payment, yes, there's a payment involved. Um, when you use a park, because these parks do not belong to government, mm -hmm. you are using a service of a third party uh, business owner. So there's a payment for the park, which ranges from between 10,000, 5,000 to 10,000, depending on location and a couple of other demographics. Coming to the pregate, you also pay 10,000 to 15,000, depending on the location of that pregate. You could pay anything between 15,000 to 25,000 to be able to get from a park to a pregate and then to the ports. So this payment is made by the owner of the truck and of course it's passed on to the owner of the goods and eventually to all of us who are consumers to all of us and i think that's something we're definitely going to get into because hauling goods moving goods from the ports here in lagos to other parts of the country is possibly one of the most expensive if not the most expensive in west africa and we need to contend with the fact that other ports in west africa are getting multi-billion rehabilitation construction work to be competitive with lagos so if we're still dealing with congestion, if we're dealing with demerge, if we're dealing with high cost of moving these uh, goods outside, we're making it easier for other countries to say, hey, come to us. It's cheaper. It won't take you as long. It's not as congested. We're going to take a quick break, Jama, but I want us to come up to this, um, to this e-call-up system because there's a very valid point that needs to be addressed. And that's the issue around possible sabotage. We've heard from the governor of Lagos State. We've heard some interesting comments as well from the vice president during the time that he came to sort of oversee that really bad congestion at one point in time. I've been in it and I know many Lagosians have sat through hours of this traffic caused by trucks. But the technology is there. This is three months down the line. It looks like the e up system has failed or it has stalled. Obviously, the human factor is at play. What's the cost of that human factor? Jama, we'll get into that when we come back. This is Business Edge. We're looking at reviewing Lagos port operations particularly, but also going to look at why is there so much focus on Tim Can and Apapa. The NPA operates four other ports around Nigeria. Stay with us. This is Business Edge on New Central. We're looking at reviewing Nigeria's port operations. I still have with me Jana, Jama Onwubui Ariri. He's the chief promoter and co-founder of the Truck Transit Parks Limited company that operates in this same very interesting area. So Jama, you've broken down how the e-call-up system works for us, but let's address the elephant in the room. Three months after the system was launched with a lot of fanfare, the system seems to have either failed or it has stalled. There are trucks that are back um, now on Lagos roads and bridges leading to the Lagos ports. I can testify to that. It's a route I literally take every day. And when you wake up, you pray that it's not the day they've all decided to call each other. Um, at some points, we know that the Lagos governor, Babajide Sanwolu, said he would name and shame those 
who sabotage the system. In a recent interview, the president of the Association of Maritime Truck Owners, Remy Ogunbemi, said that saboteurs have hijacked the newly introduced electronic call-up system. So do you think there is economic sabotage at play? Why is the system not working barely three months after it was launched? Because while there's the technology, there apparently is the human factor in this. You're right, Tolu. Um, the factors that are uh, militating against the effective implementation of the call-up system go beyond sabotage. There are quite a number of other factors. So let me start from the one you've highlighted, which is sabotage. Um, there has been different calculations of how much the old order was making from the chaos that was the um, order of the day before the call-up system, electronic call-up system was introduced. And we do not expect that these individuals or organizations who were beneficiaries of the chaos would easily give up. As we say in Nigeria, when you fight corruption, it fights back. We have experienced that. Um, I may not be able to give all the details here, but the truth is that there are certain individuals who have actively or passively sought to ensure that the system does not work and that we retain, we return to what was happening before. So that's definitely a factor. There is also the issue of um, inefficient law enforcement. So sometimes uh, we have complaints, public complaints, of individuals with valid tickets and call-ups who are either turned back bribes demanded of them, and if they do not comply, they are beating their trucks are towed away. Um, those complaints are there. There's also the transporters themselves, who for one reason or the other, want to jump the queue. So they either offer bribe, or they willingly give it, or they reluctantly give it in order to get ahead of others. So that's also a factor. Talking about the road infrastructure, this um, road access was constructed about 50, 60 years ago, yeah. and they were meant to handle much more, uh, much less traffic than they currently have to contend with. Now, the road access within Apapa has not been expanded. Mm -hmm. It remains the same roads that were there in the 60s and 70s. So you would expect a certain level of congestion resulting from just this singular factor. Now, add to the roads are not enough to the fact that they are not in good condition. So that also means that the, slow, the pace of movement will be much more slower. So apparently, if it takes a truck five minutes, to get from the Lilibon truck park as a brigade to the port, it may take just because of the size of road available and the condition of that road. So that means that the time you could have used to move four trucks, you're using it to move just one truck. Mm. So those are uh, socioeconomic factors that also contribute to the efficiency of the call-up system. Truck Transit Parks Limited is an IT company. Our role is to ensure that the inf uh, ICT infrastructure both hardware and software are in place, and these are largely in place as we speak. Mm -hmm. The app is um, intended, and we are growing its capacity every day. So the challenges you're seeing on the road is not because of the ETO app. It is because of the human factors, the um, lack of um, adequate infrastructure, uh, both uh, 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 in terms of human and uh, material, and also the condition of the road together with the sabot mentioned. There are also the issue of um, downtime at some of the terminals within the ports. Yeah. Um, when this downtime occur, you will not be able to process the same number of trucks in a day as you ordinarily would have. You won't be able to evacuate the same number of containers as you would have had if there was no downtime. So um, this downtime could come because of mechanical failure, uh, labor issues, and the rest. And we've experienced all of this within this three-month period. So this is a, is a whole community of factors that actually are at play here. And um, the stakeholders are very much conscious of this, I must say. Okay, so Jama, it's a whole community of factors that you're saying are at play here. They're at play in Lagos, at the Lagos Port Complex, which includes Apapa and Tin Can. But that's not the only port that Nigeria has. Now, the MPA controls, uh, they also control Calabar Port, Delta Port, Rivers Port at Pohar Port and One Port as well. But a large part of the attention of the focus happens to stay on the ports here in Lagos. If it was seen that these other ports were fully operational, the roads were good, a system such as the e up system was also in play there, security was also uh, put in place there, do you think these other four ports across the nation operated as well by the MPA could compete with the ports in Lagos? Could they compete enough that people would choose these ports to go through and leave the problems of the Lagos ports, the community of issues, as you said? Well, um, I think the MPA will be in the best position to answer that. But as a Nigerian and as someone who reads the news, I've, I've seen um, several positions, both from the side of the government and from the side of the operators, 
that opening up these other ports, deepening their capacity to handle vessels, would um, definitely assist in decongesting the Lagos ports. However, it's important to note that the road system that enables us to be able to move goods from any of these ports also need to be looked at yeah. because there is an economic reason why most importers and exporters would choose Lagos over any other port in Nigeria. So I think it goes beyond just fixing or increasing the capacity of these um, non-Lagos ports, but also a whole economic infrastructure, including road access, uh, security, that are at play in sort of shifting the attention of shippers to the Lagos ports. Okay. There's not a lot of time, but I definitely need us to address this. So according to some reports, Nigeria loses upwards of 600 billion naira every year because of the port issues that we face in Apapa and Tin Can. And one of the things that we've seen in recent times is that haulage is now very, very expensive. Depending on who you ask, it can be anywhere of upwards 1.3 million uh, naira or 2 million naira, depending on the destination, to actually take goods out of the ports. I really need you to break it down for us. Why is it so expensive? You talked about roads, you've talked about the security, even listing how much it costs at the pre-gate and also to stay at some of the holding bays. These are costs that eventually pass down as we agreed to the owner of the goods and then to the consumers on the Nigerian market or elsewhere. But beyond that, what's adding to the cost of removing goods out of these ports? Okay, so um, the existing order before Um, require pay fifty thousand and two hundred and move a truck into the port and get it to evacuate or to drop a cargo. Now the system that we're operating only charging a maximum of about twenty five thousand. So compare that to fifty thousand to two hundred and fifty thousand. Um, in uh, some there's mentioned that the cost of evacuating goods and um, logistics has dropped by about 30 to 40 percent in traditional is a situation that we would like to sustain. Mm -hmm. So um, a system that originally was taking 50,000 to 250,000 has now been reduced to a maximum of 25,000 and possibly 15,000. Oh, well. something would be if the other community of factors that I mentioned that play are also dealt with. Okay. Uh, Jama, we'll end the conversation here for now, but of course we know it's an ongoing one. There are some uh, bits and pieces of conversation happening in terms of making sure that the e-call-up system is not tossed aside, but also, as you noted, it's beyond that. So there's a human factor and then a whole community uh, that has to do with the economic conversation around Nigeria's ports. Jama Onwubu Ariri, the chief promoter and co-founder of Truck Transit Park Limited, thank you so much for joining me on Business Edge. Thank you, Tolu. My pleasure. Right. Till next time. All right, before we wrap things up, let's give you a few stories we are keeping our eyes on. And we start in Northern Africa, where Egyptian authorities are demanding $550 million in compensation from the owner of a cargo ship that blocked the Suez Canal for nearly a week in March. They said more than 600 workers were needed to refloat the ship, and the demand includes compensation for the family of a worker who was killed when a salvage ship sunk. The ship's owner has offered to pay $150 million. Now, under a court decision, the ever given will remain in Egypt until compensation money is paid. The South African Reserve Bank has issued a warning in its financial stability review that there are still material risks to the country's financial stability in spite of the improving economic outlook for 2021. The bank said that the risks to financial stability are related to the durability of the economic recovery. MTM Group is considering another go at becoming a mobile operator in Ethiopia after losing to Kenya's Safaricom. Recently, MTN has a growing financial services segment and serves 46.6 million mobile money customers. Meanwhile, Ethiopia, with a 112 million strong population, is considered to be the next frontier for telecoms, given it is one of the last countries in the world to end government monopoly. And finally, the last week he weekly Mombasa tea auction held had 12.8 million kilograms of tea offered for sale. The amount on offer increased from 12.6 million kilograms for the same period last year and 12.2 million kilograms during the previous sale. Of all the tea offered for sale, 12 million kilograms were sold compared to 10 million kilograms for the same period last year and 11.5 million kilograms during the previous sale. 
And that's it on this edition of Business Edge. Follow us on social media. We are at New Central TV and head to our website as well as our YouTube channel. You can also download our mobile app on Play Store and App Store and keep us with you wherever you go. Till next time, I'm Tolu Lokwe at Dileru Balogun.